Let's begin with this article from yesterday's newspaper, Disregarding Constitution, quote, Citizens. This article has been written in the context of ordinance being promulgated by the President to keep the services under the administrative control of LG in the Union Territory of Delhi. In the last year prelims examination, UPSC has asked this question. Consider the following statements. A bill amending the constitution requires a prior recommendation of the president. No such prior recommendation is required for any bill seeking constitutional amendment. And removing the first statement, you easily land to the correct option. But you also must learn here that a constitutional amendment bill must be passed by Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha separately by special majority. There is no provision of joint sitting. Now let's take this practice question. A constitutional amendment cannot be made through ordinance route in the context of Indian polity. The statement is correct. The amendment of the constitution is done as per the provisions of Article 368. And Clause 2 of Article 368 reads like this. An amendment to this constitution may be initiated only by the introduction of a bill for the purpose in either house of parliament. So although it has not been explicitly mentioned in the constitution that ordinance route cannot be adopted for constitutional amendment, but by the plain reading of clause 2 of article 368, it is clear that constitutional amendment can only be done by introduction of a bill in either house. So it is implied here that ordinance route cannot be used for constitutional amendment. The statement is correct. President's decision to promulgate an ordinance could be challenged on the grounds that immediate action was not required and ordinance has been issued primarily to bypass the debate and discussion in the legislature. This was ruled by the Supreme Court in R.C. Cooper v. Union of India in 1970. But it also has been reiterated in the 44th constitutional amendment. So the second statement is correct as well. You must have read another article in yesterday's newspaper, Justice that also makes space for animal welfare. The article is in the context of Jalikatu. In 2017, Supreme Court ruled that bull's anatomy is not designed for the bull to run. So any sports event like Jalikatu amounts to cruelty to animals. And after that judgment, Tamil Nadu Amendment Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. But the amendment has been challenged, but this time around it seems like Supreme Court is not towing the line of completely banning Jalikatu. We will take up two questions in the context of this article, one in the context of Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960 and one on Jalikatu. In 2014, UPC has asked this question, Animal Welfare Board of India is established under Environment Protection Act 1986, which is incorrect because it is established under Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. National Tiger Conservation Authority is a statutory body, yes, and National Ganga River Basin Authority is chaired by Prime Minister. You must know the body is chaired by Prime Minister. UPSC often asks this. Now consider this question regarding Animal Welfare Board of India and Central Zoo Authority. Both of them are formed under Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. Well, Animal Welfare Board of India is formed under this act, but Central Zoo Authority is formed under Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So the statement is incorrect. Both are chaired by Environment Minister. Central Zoo Authority is chaired by Environment Minister, but Animal Welfare Board of India is chaired by any humanitarian. For example, previously, Srimati Rukmani Devi Arundel, she was the chairman. Statement incorrect again. Both work under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Central Zoo Authority does work under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. But Animal Welfare Board of India works under Ministry of Fishery Animal Husbandry. So none of the statement here is correct. Regarding Jalikatu, it is a bull taming sport. You must read it little carefully. It is bull chasing sport. It is not a bull taming sport. It is native to the state of Tamil Nadu and has been in practice since Sangam age. If you don't know whether it was in practice during Sangam age or not, Statements like these are generally correct. If you cannot negate the statement outright, you must take general statements like this in your PSC civil service prelims exam as correct. There was an editorial article in the Hindu regarding the role of SEBI. UPSC do ask about regulators. 
they have asked umpteen number of times regarding the regulatory role of RBI. In 2019, they have asked about Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board, saying that it is the first regulatory body to be set up by Government of India, which is incorrect. The first independent regulatory body set up by Government of India was Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, Thrai. You remove first, you are left with option B. SEBI was established in 1992 and operates under the jurisdiction of Ministry of Finance. Yes, it does operate under Ministry of Finance. But SEBI was established as an executive body by executive resolution in 1988 via ordinance, which was later converted into an act. It was made a statutory body in 1992. The statement per se is incorrect. SEBI's primary objective is to protect the investors. Prime Minister Modi is on Australia tour and you must be reading a lot of article on India-Australia ties. Generally, the country or the region which is in news, UPSC touch upon the geographical or other environmental aspect of that region or nation. UPSC has began to set the trend of asking questions altogether without any context of India on another country. In 2022, it has asked on Vietnam. Although there is a context to it, because of US-China war, many of the manufacturing units, they were pulling out of China, which was thought to land naturally to India, but many of them went to other Southeast Asian nations, especially Vietnam. So it is in that context that this question was asked. But nevertheless, looking at this question and some of the other questions that I'm going to show you, let's take up this question. The Great Barrier Reef is located off the north and eastern coast of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is also World Heritage Site in Australia and it is in this region. There was a report in 2020 that more than 50% of it has been destroyed. In the region of Australia, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, large proportion of coral reefs of the world are found in this region. The Platypus is a unique Australian mammal that lay eggs. There are only five mammals that lay eggs and all five of them are found in Australia and the nearby Papua New Guinea region. The emu is the largest bird species found in Australia. Emu is the second largest bird species in the world and the largest in Australia. It is correct again. It is the second largest after ostrich and ostriches are mostly found in Africa. Although there are few population of ostrich in southern Australia, but generally speaking, the statement is correct. Canberra is longitudinally east to Tokyo. I'm sorry for this statement, but the statement is correct. Canberra is longitudinally east to Tokyo. UPSC has asked question like this. Previously in 2018, they asked among the following cities, which one lies on a longitude closest to that of Delhi? So all four statements here are correct. There's a news on European Union's carbon border adjustment mechanism. UPSC keep asking about European Union. In 2017, they asked, with reference to Global Climate Change Alliance, which of the following statements is are correct? It is initiative of European Union. It was started in 2007. The statement is correct. And UPSC mess up the bodies. These two bodies do not coordinate in Global Climate Change Alliance. And when you discover a messed up statement like this, you quickly reach to the answer. If you just remove the third statement, you will reach to the correct option. UPSC also asked about broad-based trade and investment agreement. It was in the context of negotiation between India and European Union. And the carbon border adjustment mechanism has been in use in the context of European Union. They observe that many of the carbon intensive industries like cement, steel, they are moving out to the neighboring region outside European Union and then they are exporting products. So to bring a kind of parity between the industries in European Union and the industries exporting through European Union at the border, these carbon intensive products coming from outside would be taxed. And basically that's what carbon border adjustment mechanism is. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead.